Right, here we go. Let's be a quick video on getting your bump maps from your high poly model from ZBrush onto the low poly model. So once you've uh, done your model in ZBrush here, we've got the low poly. <coughs> and if I go up through the resolutions, obviously you can see I've been painting in all the detail. Now once you've got to about this stage and it's all done and you're happy with it, just go up here to export. And obviously you can see I've exported a couple there, so I'm not going to do it again. But yeah, just click export and that'll go out. Then you want to bring it up in max. So I've coloured them here so you can see them a bit better. The orange one's the low poly and the blue one's the high poly. And obviously at this point you've got to have your low poly unwrapped. So I'll high poly and get rid of one. If my computer ever slides up. Right, yeah, there's the uh, high poly. Exported straight out of ZBrush. So you can see all the details still there. And it's just coming in at 408,000 tries at the moment. Nice and low. And yeah, uh, so once you've got your high poly in, you then build the low poly around that. So orange is low poly. You can see the wire there, much smaller. And if I go to the modifiers, you can see the green lines there, and that's the UV map. But I won't talk about that much now. I'll do another little tutorial later on how to get a nice UV map all stretched out. So, once that's all in, you need to go to your low polygon model. Let me try and select it. Right, yeah, the UV modifier is still there. Oh, it's force of habit. I don't think it needs to be there, but I still leave it there. Uh, bring down your drop down box, scroll down somewhere along there, uh, go to projection, click on that. Then on the right, you've got some options here, and you want to go to pick list. And it should come up with the list of all the objects in the scene. Obviously, it's nice and simple. I've only got one of the objects, and that's the high poly model. So go there, click on that. And anything you click from that list, the pick list, will be included inside uh, the baking options. Then once you've got that stage, scroll down here, go to your cage. Now you've always got to reset the cage. I don't know why, but you do it, it keeps it clean. And you can see the yellow uh, wire mesh there. That's the cage. And then you want to go to the amount of push here, and up it. And you can see the cage getting bigger as I do that. And what you want is all the blue mesh, the high poly mesh, included inside the cage. If a bit of the high poly mesh sticks outside it, it won't get included and it won't get baked. So, once you've got that about right, I don't know, let's go for that. You're going to have to tinker with it, and I'll show you why in a minute when it gets baked. But you can see that all the blue mesh is just about inside it. And then once you've got to this stage, you just go up here, rendering. Then go render to texture. We should bring up another list. There's only a couple of options in here that you actually need. There's a shitload that you can go through, but I don't really bother. Uh, scroll down here. Uh, normally, you'll need to enable this. It's on at the moment because I've done it before. Uh, but you've got to enable that, and that will use the UV channel that you've already unwrapped to. So it's channel 1, and that's the only UV channel there is in the scene. Obviously, if you had more, you can select 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. Uh, go down here. I'll delete that so I can start again. Go to add, and you can see here you've got a list of uh, maps. All you want to do is go to normal maps, add the element, and then down here you can choose the size because it's only a test. I'm going to keep it quite small so it doesn't slow my computer down too much. And then here, the file name type, you've also got the location that you want to save it to. So I'll just save it to there as test really quickly. And that's just for a TGA file, you get a list of options, but I don't bother with that either. And then once you're all ready, quite simple, just hit render. You'll see a box coming up here and it's rendering the bump map. At least it should do. Slowly. Now see, it'll come up not looking like a normal map at all. All it's doing here is taking a render as if uh, you had some lights in the scene. 
and you can see it's completely blue and that's only because the high poly mesh is blue if it was green it would be green but this isn't the finished product you'll see in a second see the red areas on the map are the areas that the cage has not got to so there's a little one down there and obviously these ones the cage just hasn't included at all the eye is a good example because it's covered up on either side and the toes they're not included either This may take a little longer than normal, so I've just noticed I've got mental ray on as well. You don't need mental ray to do the normal maps, but you do need mental ray to do ambient occlusion maps. You also need a very fast computer that I don't have. This is baking the object now. So there's a little couple of artifacts around the eye as well, but that can be sorted out in Photoshop afterwards. Or you can play with the cage more and try and fix out the little bumps like that. about the black on that side either. That's only because the default lights in Max are set up and they're all on that side. There you go, right, that's all done. It's saved it. So you go to Photoshop or whatever your editing software of choice might be. And slowly but surely might be able to start to navigate towards the picture. Yeah, the default uh, folder for the output is in your 3D Max folder in my documents generally. So you go 3D Max and then it's Scene Assets and then in Images, that's the default probably. Let's see the other stuff I've done in there. Uh, what did I save it as? Test, yeah, there it is. Open that up. And there's the bump map. Now you can see it's just baked off all the high poly stuff onto a nice normal map. So if I get closer you can see some of those little artifacts there around the eye, but you can quite easily fix that either again by sorting out the cage, but it can be a lot quicker just to get the blur tool. Just go over it like that. Obviously I'm doing it really roughly right now, but you can see how quickly it goes away. Or your clone stamp works equally well. But yeah, no, that's that. There's your bump map, and then that's ready to be stuck straight on as a UV map, which I suppose I could do now quickly. But let's get rid of the high poly, otherwise it's going to destroy my speed. Yeah, that's gone. And open up your maps. Let's see anyone who's used maps before knows what I'm doing here. Get a bump. That when you're adding the bump, never click on bump and immediately add a bitmap because that basically just uses a grayscale image. So, whatever you load in, whether it's blue, a proper normal map, or whatever, it will just turn it into a grayscale image and you won't get proper bumping. You want to scroll down and go to normal bump. And then from normal bump, that's when you want to select your bitmap, which was test. then go back up again and again put it up a bit more than 150 that'll do and then just go out F9 for a render you can see there it's getting on all the textures well, that was really quick really rough but you can see how it works now hopefully that makes things a little bit easier and next time I will try and do something on making a nice UV map so that you can actually do all this. Cheers.